Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be talking about the chemistry of carbohydrates. The carbohydrates, which are also known as saccharides, are molecular compounds that are made from only three elements that are carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So this means that carbohydrates are organic molecules comprising of hydrocarbons only. And what can these carbohydrates do? Generally with reference to uh, living beings, carbohydrates act as a source of energy for the body. For example, in animals we have glucose which is the primary source of energy. Meanwhile in plants there is starch as a primary source of energy. Additionally, carbohydrates can form uh, or one particular type of carbohydrates called polysaccharides can actually assist in building the organism. For example, we have glycogen that helps in uh, construction of the animal system whereas uh, in the plants there is cellulose which is a major component of the cell wall. Furthermore, carbohydrates can play a crucial role in uh, building other macromolecules like the DNA, RNA, glycolipids and glycoproteins apart from the ATP that is adenosine triphosphate. See in uh, the previous lectures I spoke to you about the cell membrane and its composition where I mentioned to you about uh, the glycolipids and glycoproteins that are present on the cell membrane. These are specialized macromolecules that are derived from uh, addition of carbohydrate to lipid to form glycolipid or addition of carbohydrate to protein to form glycoproteins. And uh, the DNA and RNA uh, which stands for the deoxyribonucleic acid and uh, ribonucleic acid consist of a ribose sugar. In the case of DNA, this ribose sugar would have lost one oxygen and that is, that is why it is called deoxyribonucleic acid. Whereas in the case of RNA, the loss of oxygen would not have occurred in the ribose sugar therefore it is called ribonucleic acid. So this is how carbohydrate plays a very important role in the survival of an organism. Now talking about the different types of carbohydrates, primarily carbohydrates are divided into three types. The first type or the most primitive kind of carbohydrate is known as a monosaccharide where mono means one and saccharide stands for a sugar. Carbohydrates are in general called sugar so you should be prepared to understand when I say sugar I am possibly referring to carbohydrate and not the table sugar or the sugar that we consume as a food okay you should not confuse yourself in this regard. Next we have the disaccharides which is a combination of two monosaccharides and di means two. Followed by this we have the polysaccharides where poly means many and there are many monosaccharides that are attached to each other to give rise to a polysaccharide carbohydrate. So when we look into this uh, flow chart, carbohydrates as I told you are divided into three types, monosaccharide, disaccharide and polysaccharide and the examples for monosaccharide would be glucose, fructose and galactose and all of them are single sugar molecules. Next we have the disaccharides, the examples for disaccharides are maltose, sucrose and lactose and these molecules are comprised of two monosaccharide molecules and finally we have the polysaccharides 
which uh, have uh, examples of uh, starch, glycogen and cellulose. And in these molecules, there are many sugar or monosaccharide molecules that are linked to form them. So what are these monosaccharides? Monosaccharides, as I told you, are the simplest carbohydrates. And they are often called single sugars. And by now we have already understood that monosaccharides are the building blocks for all the bigger carbohydrates. Okay, be it a disaccharide or be it a polysaccharide or be it a glycolipid or be it a glycoprotein. All such carbohydrate molecules are having monosaccharide as a basic unit. And the general molecular formula of a monosaccharide would be CH2O into N, where N can either be number 3, 5 or 6. This depends on the number of carbons that are present. Okay, N will always depend on the number of carbon molecules and monosaccharides are actually classified according to the number of carbon atoms present in the molecule. So if there are three carbon atoms, then it is that monosaccharide is called a triose and the classic example for this is glyceraldehyde. As you can see in the diagram here, you have glyceraldehyde which is a triose sugar and uh, it has got a molecular uh, formula of C3H6O3 that means that the general molecular formula CH2O is multiplied by 3 since N is equal to 3. Okay. Next we have uh, the pentose uh, sugars containing uh, 5 carbons and the example uh, for this would be ribose which is uh, as you can see here in the structure it has got 5 uh, carbon atoms. And uh, therefore, the structural formula for ribose will be C5H10O5. Okay, so if you cross check it with the general molecular formula, which is CH2O, and since you have uh, 5 carbons here, N will be equal to 5. So CH2O into 5, that will give you C5H10O5. And then we have uh, glucose as an example which is a hexo sugar meaning that there are six carbon atoms therefore n is equal to six and uh, the molecular formula will be c6h12o6 where the general formula is multiplied with six Talking further, monosaccharides can also be classified into two other types of uh, compounds which are called the aldose sugars and the ketose sugars. Aldose sugars will generally contain an aldehyde uh, group in them. Aldehyde is uh, the CHO group. I believe you have all studied uh, them in the chemistry le le lessons for your uh, PUC and uh, an aldose sugar will have CHO in it. As you can see in the first uh, structure, structure that we have, it is a triose sugar comprising of the CHO group. Whereas talking about the keto sugar will contain a ketone group that is CO group. And here, this the second uh, structure is also a triose uh, sugar, but uh, as you can see, there is no aldehyde group present, but there is a ketone group present in the center, C double bond O. So, depending on the group that is present, if it is either an aldehyde group or a ketone group, the monosaccharides can be classified into aldoses and ketoses.
and uh, when we talk about uh, monosaccharides there is another phenomena that we should be very well aware of this is a chemical phenomena called stereoisomers where the molecules will have the same molecular formula but different structural formula particularly when you look into uh, the uh, pentose sugars and uh, hexose sugars you can find that there is more than one molecule having a molecular formula C5H10O5 and more than one molecule with the molecular formula C6H12O6. The best examples here for uh, the pentose sugars will be ribose and arabinose. See if you observe, they have the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens and same number of oxygens. But the only difference that is occurring is in the structural formula due to variation in the location of one OH group. As you can see, I have uh, put up an arrow mark also uh, for arabinose. You can compare it with the ribose uh, structure. You can identify that that one OH group is on the other side as compared to that of the ribose group. So this structural variation itself is enough to give rise to a new molecule altogether. So they will have same molecular formula that is C5H10O5 both ribose as well as arapinose. But they are two different molecules owing to the location of the OH group. Similarly in the galactose and glucose. Here also you can see that they have the same molecular formula that is C6H12O6 but the difference occurs in the positioning of one OH group in the galactose okay as you can observe uh, in the structure I have put an arrow mark for the glucose okay so this is the OH group that differs in the galactose. Okay, glucose is always taken as a standard reference. Okay, so it has to be the galactose that is having a change in the position of OH. And also if you notice all the four structures have aldehyde as their uh, subgroup. Uh, here in ribose and arabinose also, they are both aldose sugars. Whereas in the hexoses also you have the galactose and glucose they both have aldehyde group so they are aldose sugars and uh, the best example for a keto sugar will be fructose now moving on to disaccharides generally monosaccharides are rare in nature and most of the sugars that you find naturally are disaccharides Disaccharides are formed when two monosaccharides react and interact with each other to form a product. There are three very important disaccharides, sucrose, lactose and maltose. Sucrose is known to be a non-reducing sugar whereas lactose and maltose are reducing sugars. So when we talk about reducing it indicates that when uh, there is an experiment called uh, the Benedict's experiment where uh, we use a Benedict's reagent which is blue in color. So when Benedict's reagent is added to a carbohydrate, if the carbohydrate is of a reducing nature, the color of the reagent will change. It can change from green to red depending on the amount of carbohydrate present but if there is sucrose that is present the benedict's reagent since uh, sucrose is a non-reducing sugar will not get reduced and there will be no change in color so this is why a reducing sugar and non-reducing sugar classification has come up okay but for your uh, syllabus and for uh, the cell biology purpose uh, this is not of uh, much importance okay you have to look into the general uh, structural chemistry of the 
carbohydrates. So talking about this, disaccharides are soluble in water. Okay, uh, you all know that uh, sucrose is a disaccharide now and you also know that sucrose is nothing but the sugar that you consume on a regular basis and sugar is soluble in water. So you can remember this by saying that sugar that you use at home is a disaccharide and it is soluble in water. But the very same sugar molecule is also very big to pass through the cell membrane by the means of diffusion. So what will happen? The sugar molecule is broken down in the small intestine during digestion to give rise to smaller monosaccharides that can pass through the bloodstream and enter into the cells by, via the plasma membrane or the cell membrane. So talking about the structure of uh, the disaccharides, I told you there are three important disaccharides, sucrose, lactose and maltose. Sucrose is a disaccharide formed by fusion of glucose and fructose. And lactose is formed by the fusion of galactose and glucose. Whereas maltose is formed by the fusion of glucose and glucose. So in maltose there are two glucose molecules that are present. In lactose there is a galactose and a glucose molecule that is present. Whereas in sucrose there is a glucose and fructose molecule that is present. And if you see the structure here, you can observe that there is a difference between the structures I showed you earlier and the structure you are seeing now. This is because the pentose sugars and hexose sugars can actually be written in two, two uh, forms. Okay, This is known as a cyclic representation of a sugar molecule where it is written in the form of a cycle. Whereas earlier what I showed you was a linear expression of the sugar molecule. Okay, they are both same molecules but you don't have to you know worry about uh, why there is a difference. Okay, this is only a you know growing phenomenon uh, in chemistry and since we are not focusing on the structural components you don't have to worry about it. You can know this much and this, this should be sufficient. Moving on further, we have the polysaccharides. Here, monosaccharides will undergo a variety of condensation reactions to form polysaccharides. And this process is particularly called condensation polymerization where the monosaccharides will act as a building blocks of the polysaccharide and thereby they are called as the monomers of the polysaccharide. Generally the properties of a polysaccharide molecule will depend on a few things or few characters of the polysaccharide. Firstly it is the length of the polysaccharide that is important, then the extent of branching of the polysaccharide and uh, folding of the polysaccharide which results in a compact molecule and finally if there is a chain that is formed we should also consider if the chain is a straight chain or a coiled chain. You will understand this when I show you a pictorial representation of the same in the next slide okay but you should remember that these are the properties that affect a polysaccharide molecules reactivity. These are the classic examples of polysaccharide. Okay, there are three major biologically available polysaccharides. First one is cellulose, which is found in plants. Next is starch, which is found in plants. And finally, glycogen, which is found in animals. Okay, cellulose is formed by the condensation polymerization of beta glucose molecules. And the bonding here will occur from the carbon 1 of one glucose with the carbon 4 of the other glucose. 
so that is why it is written as one four bonding and there are no branches that are found in cellulose so technically cellulose is a linear molecule where one glucose unit is attached to the other glucose unit in a linear fashion as you can see here in the shape each circle represents a glucose unit and cellulose molecule will look like this only it will look like a string of beads where each bead will be a glucose unit and uh, next we have the starch uh, polysaccharide starch has got uh, two uh, subunits one is an amylose and other is an amylopectin both amylose and amylopectin are formed by uh, condensation polymerization of alpha glucose molecules while in the amylopectin the bondage that will occur between the glucose glucose molecules is 1,4 linkage in the amylopectin the linkage is 1,4 or 1,6 meaning that the bond will be formed between glucose uh, carbon number 1 of one glucose and carbon number four of the other glucose or carbon number one of one glucose and carbon number six of the other glucose and uh, in the amylose there is no branching that appears so in the shape that you observe like it is a linear uh, bead like structure but it occurs in the form of coils Okay, there is coiling in the case of amylose. You did not observe coiling in the case of cellulose. Okay, there is no branching occurring in cellulose and amylose, but amylose has got coiling of the structure. Meanwhile, in the case of amylopectin, there is branching that is seen. And this branching is usually like for every 20 subunits of glu glucose or for every interval of 20 units there is a branch that is occurring so what happens you can see a great structural difference between the cellulose or amylose and the amylopectin due to the branching as you can observe here the branching will lead to formation of nodes and internodes similar to how you can see in the form of a tree when you observe a tree due to branching it has been divided very readily likewise amylopectin also will undergo a lot of branching next is glycogen which is an animal polysaccharide with that is having alpha glucose subunits here also similar to amylopectin the bonds can be 1,4 or 1,6 and there can be branches as well okay but these branches occur more frequently as compared to amylopectin. In the amylopectin, there was branching occurring for every 20 subunits. Whereas here, the branching occurs for every 10 subunits of glucose. So there is more diverse branching that can be observed in the case of glycogen. Uh, when you see the shape, it looks like a even diverse uh, or even branched uh, tree as compared to that of amylopectin. So I hope you have understood uh, today's concepts and if you have any doubts you can always ask me. Thank you.